Welcome back, Saviors. GH here. Another year is ending, and it's time for our yearly Ragnarok games I played video, and this one is for 2021. Here we go again. This are the Ragnarok games I played in 2021. Let's do this. First game I'm gonna show you guys is Ragnarok Eternal Love. I checked the game out at right around October and I was presented with a completely different Ragnarok game. The character creation is not what I remembered. The classes are severely different but it was interesting. I especially like the class I picked which enabled me to use a mecha. That's always fun. And when I started playing the game, it began in this Disney World theme park. And I was like, what the heck is this? It's not Ragnarok Online, but what I didn't know is Ragnarok M Eternal Love had a collaboration with Disney and the beginner area was changed into a theme park. Very colorful and vibrant and there's also Disney themed skins to go along with it. So I played it for like a week because I could run it on the background and for the most part, it was hands off and just me customizing my character but I was looking for engaging gameplay. So what did I do? I waited for the next Ragnarok game. And it's called Ragnarok Battle Academy. And I must say, this is an entertaining game to say the least. I only played it for like a few hours because it was on beta test. And it was laggy. Remember the old school time where we played the original Ragnarok online and we had bad internet and our character were rubber band? That's exactly what I experienced. And I hope they fix it on the release of Ragnarok Battle Academy because it's fun. It's a battle royale game based on the Ragnarok franchise. There's no release date yet, but they are preparing for another test soon. Next Ragnarok game is Ragnarok DS. It's an offline Ragnarok RPG released in 2010, 11 years ago. I came back and checked the game out again because I was in a journey to show you guys the Ragnarok games available. I don't know why, <laughs> I probably drank something weird. Anyway, I still consider Ragnarok DS as one of the best use of the Ragnarok franchise. I like the story driven gameplay, the combat is simple, we just tap to attack enemies and we even get to choose our own job and all this on the Nintendo DS. Now I rarely see this on games that uses the Ragnarok skin but you guys gotta at least check this one out. Next up is Ragnarok Battle Offline. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up game based on the Ragnarok franchise. And in the short time I've spent playing this, I was definitely lost the entire time because I didn't know how to activate skills and whatnot. But when I learned it, it became fun, like a traditional beat-em-up game. And in Ragnarok Battle Online, we start out by choosing our job, unlike in the original Ragnarok game. And each of the jobs has its own skill sets. Now, if you're planning to try the game out, just use Google and type in Ragnarok Battle Offline. There's no site for this because it's a relic from the past and there's only a random guy sharing the game files. Coming up next is a weird Ragnarok game and spoiler alert, the game is no longer available because it took all the things that we didn't like in a mobile game and used the Ragnarok skin and called it Action RO2, Spear of Odin. Yes, Action R02 Spear of Odin is a hub based MMO that plays on its own and the amount of gacha you will be doing in this is astonishing. I can't believe they didn't call this randomized gacha roulette Ragnarok game. And in my time playing it, if only they didn't fully outplay the gameplay experience the game, I would have said it's an okay game. But it isn't. The early shutdown only proved that players didn't like it. And I hope that this is the last time we will see these kinds of games. And of course, I was wrong, because The Labyrinth of Ragnarok came out. The Labyrinth of Ragnarok is an idle RPG, a genre of games that I still do not understand. So I'm gonna approach this part of the video by just telling you guys what the developers wants to say. And here it is. Welcome to The Labyrinth of Ragnarok. The epic game added maze dungeons to be more interesting. Wait, what? Now I'm even more confused when I read that. Okay. They said it's interesting, good luck!
Now the butchering still hasn't stopped because Ragnarok Frontier is right around the corner. It's a browser based idle MMO that's not in English. I'm pretty sure it's Indonesian but I could be wrong with that. It's not my intention to show you guys the games that you barely play but these are games that bears the Ragnarok online skin and I tried it so I have to at least mention it. And in Ragnarok Frontier, for the most part, you watch the gameplay on its own. It does somehow look like Ragnarok and it sounds like it too sometimes. But to be honest, it feels like a downgrade. But if you're interested in what you're seeing right now, the details are on the screen. Next Ragnarok game is Ragnarok X, next generation. Compared to the previous Ragnarok games I mentioned, this one is high quality. I really like how the game looks. But <laughs> that's where it stops. Because like the previous Ragnarok games, it's also a game that plays on its own. You mainly get rewards and then maybe customize your character, which is fun. I acknowledge that customizing your own avatar is an RPG experience that's a fun and engaging gameplay. But it shouldn't stop there, because the combat should be the most engaging part of the game. Ragnarok X Next Generation is a good demo. Now what they should do next is find a way to keep us engaged in combat, which is definitely what they are missing. Coming up next is a more recent Ragnarok game and it's Ragnarok The Lost Memories. Now this one they tried to preserve how the game looked and to be honest, I like what they did and right now I'm still checking the game out from time to time. Cause I'm curious on what they did to all the Ragnarok cities. Ragnarok The Lost Memories is a story driven MMORPG based on the Ragnarok franchise and the combat is strategy wherein when you bump into a monster the combat will start and the characters will start attacking the nearest enemy and what you do here is assist your characters with the use of cords that can attack enemies and heal your own characters. If that's it, it would have been fine but like all the other mobile games they autoplayed the usage of the cards, which again keeps us from being engaged in the game. But there are instances that you gotta interfere or else you lose. So that's that. And if you like what you see, the details are on the screen. And the last Ragnarok game is Ragnarok Online Prime. It's an official Ragnarok server for Ragnarok Online. Yes, the OG Ragnarok Online, the original Ragnarok Online, it's still the best one you can play. Gravity still haven't made the rightful game or should I say the proper sequel to one of the best MMORPG I played. The prime version of Ragnarok Online brings updated mechanics, class and skills, the third classes in most locations are already available and more updates are to come and if you're interested in RO Prime. The details are on the screen. And if you wanna see the Ragnarok games I played in 2020, there's a link in the description and there will be a card on top that's supposed to pop out. So yeah, that's another year of playing Ragnarok games and I wish you all happy holidays. And this is Gaming Hardcore. See you in the next one.